Satori Fund founder Dan Niles joins us now with more on where big tech is going from here. Dan, great to have you with us. And I just want to, you know, start off with the debate that we've been having here on the desk as to whether or not you think uh, this AI-led rally is anything like what we saw back during the Internet bubble. I mean, you lived through those times. You worked through those times as well. I mean, it is and it isn't. I guess the way I would look at it is the following. Netscape Navigator was launched in December of 1994. And so if you think about from that period, when did NASDAQ peak? It peaked in March of 2000. So it took you a good five years for that bubble to really build. And did you get corrections along the way and drawdowns? Of course you did. But like the peak took you five years. And so we're, we only heard about ChatGPT in November of 2022. And so you're into this a year and a quarter. So from a time perspective, you haven't had really what you need for a good bubble to build up. Now, that doesn't mean that the NASDAQ can't go down 10 to 15% come this summer. Wouldn't surprise me at all. But from a valuation perspective, it's nowhere near that either, where if you look at Cisco, it was growing revenues at 59% in 2000. You know, the Ford multiple was about 138 at its peak, 138 times. And NVIDIA is trading at about like 38 times, growing 90%. So a valuation, you're not there either. And so it depends if you're talking short term, is the market frothy? And are some of the estimates make no sense? Like NVIDIA is going to grow revenues each quarter for the next eight quarters at 6% each with no down? Yeah, that makes no sense. I would bet you anything that NVIDIA will have a down quarter in the next two years, and it could be substantial. But from a valuation perspective or a long-term perspective related to time, you can't say that we're there. So you want to cut out three of the MAG7 or what's known as a MAG7 currently, Apple, Google, uh, as well as Tesla. Do you think that there's no hope for them, that they're permanently out? No, I mean, I think it's I'm an earnings driven investor, so I'm not somebody that's going to be buying something with no earnings and expecting the multiple to double, triple, quadruple while margins are going down. So I like earnings. If you look at Apple, if you owned it last year, you made money, but you made money with the estimates getting cut every single quarter that they reported. Why? Because people went from the Fed raising rates at the fastest rate since the 1970s to the rate cuts stopped, and then we were discounting seven rate cuts at its peak looking forward into this year. That's why Apple went up. Tesla, it's a similar situation where EPS went down 50% from the beginning of last year through the end of last year for the December quarter that they reported, and then they missed that, but the stock doubled. So this year, I think the difference is sort of, you know, those rate cuts have gone from seven cuts to three. We're now focused more on earnings, and Apple missed yet again in terms of the forward numbers got cut. Tesla, the Ford numbers got cut again, but people actually cared. With Google, you've got a, a different situation where, you know, based on internal politics or whatever, they are doing a bad job of moving to this AI generation. Now, they could change that overnight if they just fired probably 10% of their workforce and said, look, we're going to provide accurate answers, not politically correct answers, because they have more data than anybody on the planet. They can give you what you need for an AI conversational search product, but they just won't do it. So with Google, that's the one I have the most hope for because it's them just changing the way they operate and they could fix the issues overnight if they wanted to. Um, so, but Google, again, missed their search advertising revenues. They missed their YouTube revenues because don't forget you have things like TikTok and ad supported tiers at Amazon, et cetera, taking time, ad dollars and time away from things like YouTube. And so you have an earnings related thing going on there as well. So to recap, Dan Niles believes the Magnificent Seven should be rebranded to the Fantastic Four. That removes Apple, Google, and Tesla. He says Apple's estimates are getting cut every single quarter they report, and the stock only went up because of the effect from rate changes. He says they missed earnings again, and they cut forward numbers. He says Tesla's earnings per share went down 50% last year, while the stock doubled. This year, earnings matter a lot more. Tesla also cut forward numbers. On the other hand, he said Google has a conflict based on internal politics that could be changed literally overnight if they just fired about 10% of their woke workforce. He says and they, if they just put out the facts, they have the most data over anybody in the world. They should have the best AI. Apple and Google are down now more than 10% from their most recent peak. Tesla's down anywhere from 20 to 30% from its most recent peak. The other four do seem to be holding up, so maybe they are the Fantastic Four. 
I do hold the three that have got cut, Apple, Google, and Tesla. I hold those plus some other positions. I do hold Amazon as well. And I, I, I bought them specifically being the laggers. And I know that they're gonna catch back up. When Apple puts it into the iPhone, they've got billions of users for it to monetize to. And then Google, they've got the most data and you use search for everything. So when they turn it around, guys, they're gonna turn on the money printers and they'll be back in action. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.